Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank both committees for holding this important hearing and uh, uh, the courtesy of allowing me to address you. Uh, I have reluctantly, through my hardworking and committed constituents, become somewhat familiar with the DD DDES situation in California. And uh, as you pointed out, there are the three basic levels of adjudication. And while much of the hearing today will focus on the issues of the, at the hearing level, as you pointed out, Mr. Chairman, I think inadequate attention is being paid to the growing crisis within the first two levels of adjudication, the initial and the reconsideration. The problems of the state agency that are charged with the first two levels pay, play a significant role in this crisis, but really have yet to be addressed in a meaningful way. I testified before one of your committees in November about the mishandling of disability claims uh, at the Disability Determination Services in California. Since that testimony, many high-level California DDS managers, including the top two directors, have in fact retired or resigned. Uh, but the quality and the accuracy of that whole decision process continues to decline. I also testified that the state furloughs of the disability analysts, state mandated furloughs, three days, uh, three days in a month, 15% cut, uh, even though the state probably loses more than gains any money from that. Uh, and those furloughs have forced these, the workers in the agency to cut corners and attempt to keep up with a massive workload while working only part-time hours. Disability applicants are being denied the opportunity to have their cases fairly and accurately decided. The greater the severity of the claimant's disability, the less likely they are to complete volum voluminous forms which are necessary for the claim, but are being used as an excuse mandated by upper levels, Mr. Chairman, to quickly close and deny cases. Claimants, as you know, are sent 30-page forms to complete, and when these forms are not completed and returned within 20 days, the cases are denied for failure to cooperate. This is inhumane and unacceptable treatment of the disabled, many of whom are children and elderly veterans who have nobly served this country. Some are mentally ill, homeless, or blind. The very nature of their disabilities prevents them from complying with the enormous task that's demanded from them. And in the, with, before the furloughs, when they had time, the analysts actually helped the claimant go through that process. Now, when they should be allowed at the initial level, they are instead denied and end up on the shelves at the hearing offices, adding to your backlog. Prior to the implementation of the state furloughs, disability claims were assigned to an analyst within 48 hours. Now that the furloughs have been in effect for over a year, Cases sit on a shelf for up to two months before they are assigned to an analyst, adding significant waiting time, obviously, to the overall process. There are over 40,000 cases sitting on the shelves of the California DDS offices, and the number is growing by more than 1,000 every week. And this is not even counting the cases, Mr. Chairman, that have been assigned to phantom staff. That's what they are called. The they don't have a staff to take them. They assign them through the computer to phantom staff, and they give the appearance that the cases are indeed being processed when they actually are not. Due to these unmanageable workloads and severe pay cut, DDS staffing is at its lowest level in a decade. And though California has hired some analysts, it takes two years of training and experience before they are really functional. The retention of talented and experienced staff is crucial to the program. And efforts by the labor unions, the Social Security Administration, and the court system have all failed to end the furloughs of these employees. And although they are set to expire in June, there are plans to either extend the furloughs or, get this, Mr. Chairman, institute pay cuts down to minimum wage, which would effectively shut down the disability program. So what should this con con Congress do? The SSA's Office of Inspector General is currently conducting an investigation in uh, California, amongst other states, that is addressing some of the specific concerns I have mentioned. And although this investigation is, is a good step, I think we need to more aggressively help the tens of thousands who are waiting for their claims to be processed as a result of state-mandated furloughs. Current federal law allows the Social Security Administrator to federalize DDS employees if a state, quote, substantially fails to live up to its responsibilities to process claims. To assist the Administrator in this area, I have drafted a bill called Don't Delay Services Act, which would deem furloughs of, these, of the DDS employees a substantial failure triggering the provision of existing federal law that allows SSA to federalize the DDS. Uh, and as drafted, my bill would not change any provisions of federal law concerning the rights or protections of these workers. This is not a perfect solution, but I think if you took this up and passed it, 
It would send a wake-up call to governors across the country who insist on pursuing the illogical and counterproductive policy of furloughing DDS employees. I look forward to working with you. I hope you will look at my bill. And I would just like to end, Mr. Chairman, with the question that uh, Mr. McDermott asked. We have all these statistics. We have all these numbers. We have all these charts about the claims backlog. But do we know how many people may have died while waiting to hear about their adjudication or the number that may have become homeless? The issue that we have to take into account is the people. I thank the chairman.